Hello, fellow Rosarians. Let's do a quick walk around and see how everything is looking. I'm gardening in Maryland, Zone 7B, and it is the second week in July. I wanted to show you these beautiful planters uh, that are hanging from the fence. They are starting to uh, trail, which is what I really wanted for them. So if we get close here, we can see, I'm hoping that this will trail also, um, and but the uh, potato vine is looking so pretty. So I'm really happy with these right now. And so let's look above real quick. I just used hanging hooks and I'll put those in the description to show everybody um, how to hang it to your fence. And then you can also see that I ran drip and um, used the, you know, the clear hooks here uh, to hold everything in place to make it look a little bit prettier. So let's see, I've got some plants hanging out here. Uh, one of the things that was interesting is I bought dappled willow that looks like this. And you can kind of see here as we're getting closer that they really um, tied the graft too tight. That one will recover. This one, the top actually snapped off of the whole thing. And instead of scrapping it and returning it, I decided to see if it would push uh, new growth. And it is, but you know what? I'm looking at this and I'm wondering if this is the graft because look, it's supposed to be um, variegated. Ah, so that means that uh, this is not the true variety and it's going to be returned now. Oh, poo, that makes me sad. I was hoping it would work. All right, so then I've got some uh, supports here with hummingbird vine. Let's head out to uh, see what's going on out here. I've got some pots hanging out that need to find a home in the garden. I've just been kind of picking away at it. And then we've got um, the spirea looking like it wants to bloom again and the wee white hydrangea. And you can see that the, I think that's a limelight. This limelight is getting ready to bloom. The one behind it is a little bit stunted. This is butterfly bush. I try to keep mine on the smaller side, three and a half feet. So after each bloom, I'll come in here and remove um, the expired blooms just to keep it in check because if you let it go, it's definitely gonna go, um, gosh, it'll go six foot or higher. So I've shared with you all that I am debudding as the um, Japanese beetles are gonna be here for another two weeks. This is cream veranda, but when I come out here, these, when you debud, the rose keeps on pushing its energy towards uh, blooming again, because that's what it really wants to do. And um, so <laughs> the blooms are coming very quickly and I just try to kind of stay with it um, on top of it. That's Matchless Mother. This is Star of the Republic. This is actually a two-year rose, a second year. Let me see if it has a scent. It does have a very light scent. And you'll say, why did I just pull off the bud? Because I know that the Japanese beetles are gonna find it here soon. And <laughs> so I'd be doing it today anyways. I think these are called Firelight Hydrangea. They will change color from the white and you can see it's already thinking about it here. Savannah, Sunbelt. So if I were to, um, you know, let the roses go, they'd all be in full flush right now. I just, I let them take a break. 
it sinks well, the Japanese beetles, with the heat of the summer. And so I, I want a break from being outside. So I let them have a break too. Uh, this is sensuous. And that's a Hyde Hall, which has mosaic. I'm getting ready to pull that one out to make room for another rose. You can see here I have flocks uh, that are rather young, so those will grow taller, uh, but they're blooming. I've got a hot pink and white in here. I think this is, this is Wellenspiel back here. I garden organically, and that's why you're gonna see bug damage on the leaves. I didn't let it bother me too much. Uh, because the blooms are still so pretty and I feel good about not uh, affecting the beneficials in the garden. This is Julie Andrews. This is Belinda's Blush. And Belinda's blush has been very healthy for us. Nice. Uh, I love the edges here on this. The edges of the petals are sweet. As I have mentioned to you, we're getting ready to do a renovation. And so with that renovation, I'm going to have extra pavers up by the house that I needed to move. I would prefer to have a something that looks more natural and um, you know stones, but these needed a home anyways, and so until the renovation is over, that's what we're going to use. Let's see. You can see the hydrangea here. These are limelights, and they are about a month early with their flush, and so we'll be seeing these in the next couple of days in. Uh, full bloom and I'll make sure that I put a picture out on uh, my Facebook page and if we look here We've got a couple of roses that keep on pushing through. Oh down here. This is called Peter's Cottontail and I like to keep it because I think it's really neat for flower arrangements um, but it's I know it looks kind of weedy um, but I'm going to tuck these and move them um, around the, uh, the raised boxes here in the future. Uh, you can see over here I had to, every single time it rains, I have to level the soil and address um, places in the yard that are low lying. And so that's what I, I did there. Add soil, add seed. I have cut back um, Benjamin Britton several times already. He really wants to um, grow up above six foot right now because he's enjoying the heat so much. Uh, but let's show you how the limelights look. I like limelights because of the color. It's a green, kind of a chartreuse color, and I just love it. Um, so um, I'll show you an open bloom uh, that's fully bloomed down here in a second. Uh, but you can see that the um, supports that Ken made, the trellis supports, are almost totally hidden uh, by the hydrangea. So let's hope that when we get our first rain with those heavy blooms that it helps to keep them up. And I'll make sure that I um, keep you all posted on that. So here's our knot garden, and I need to uh, trim the Artemisia a little bit, but everything else has been trimmed back. I've cut the, um, the Salvia and the Napara so that it can get their next flush. But let's look down at the other side. I need to trim back that Artemisia just so it's inside the box hedge, but it's very happy. So just looking nice and clean. And I have a Bliss Parfuma here at the mailbox that I can't wait to see in bloom. OK, 
Okay, what else is in bloom here? Um, this is Reminiscent Crema. More Peter's Cottontail in here. Um, so this will move uh, once I get around to it. And I wanna put it in the notches of the um, the raised beds that I have here, just to keep it kind of out of the way, um, but to let, still be able to use it. This is Roll Jubilee. Okay, so remember I told you that I have some limelights that are already blooming. Um, that's how it looks when it's in bloom. We'll head down here. These are smaller because I, I had the wrong variety in here and I didn't know it. It was mislabeled. So these three are just catching up right now. But it'll, hopefully that support will hold them. Benjamin shooting for the sky. So I like this time because I can, you know, I'm debudding and then I'm getting in here and taking care of the weeds and addressing the issues that, um, you know, the roses might have after their first flush. This is Chaucer. The blue hydrangeas are finishing their flush. So I like to bring the garden back to how pretty and clean it was on that first flush. This is Perdita. And so that's what I use this time for uh, when I'm dealing with the Japanese beetles. This is Bordeaux. So I'm waiting for um, new roses to come in the fall, and those will go there. So here I had beautiful Jacob's Ladder, and they do not like the wet soil. So they're going to come out. <laughs> I'm so sad about these because it looks so pretty, but this area and that's why we have to uh, put raised beds here. It's just low. It probably needs to come up by about a foot. Um, so I need to keep on working on that. And I can see these boxwoods are struggling a little bit. I've got a abervitae that needs to come out. This is Scarble Fair. My Phlox. Looks like the Desdemona Standard <laughs> really wants to bloom. I'm gonna have to work on debedding this. The Ornamental Oregano uh, is finishing a bloom. The purple was so pretty. This is an Agastache, Agastache. Bees love it. This is the Country Parsons, and it's got a mild case of black spot. Charlotte. This is Port Sunlight. That's a blush veranda. So I've got Allium in here. Bee Balm. Um, 
these are gallicas that I want to keep in pots and I'm getting ready to move them into the back of the sun garden or shade garden. <clears throat> the mango veranda is super happy. You can see my uh, little limes over here. Lots of weeds going on because we're renovating that house and I have to pull these up anyways in the next uh, <laughs> the next week or so. I'm just behind. These are our Olivia standards and they have been really happy with um, the plants that I've potted in them. You can see here along this fence line, this is Limelight Prime. And Limelight Prime are supposed to be narrower and not as tall as the lamp limelights that I have out front at the road. Uh, I'm setting up a sprinkler to help me water pots that I've got hidden back there, just to make my life a little bit easier. Also in bloom right now, we have Yarrow. There's Noah. So you can see through here we've got um, the uh, lambs here, and I'm going to move those into other places in the yard. Through this view, you get a great view of the daylilies in bloom. can see the limelights in bloom with the Vitax behind it. Ken's garden is over there with the pink phlox to the far left. So this is our purple garden and um, it is still trying to push blooms. Let's see who this is. I think it's Angel Face. Yep. Probably need to come in here and cut back these boxwoods. I'll do that maybe in the next uh, two weeks. This is Mary in here with Nadia next to it. Souvenir de Luis Amare. Here, sensuous. The fairy is a new rose that we just added. It's earth kind and it will, um, it's supposed to be healthy and no need for pesticides. tree back here that needs to be removed. It's always so interesting when the, the weeds start to grow and all of a sudden out of nowhere they're four foot tall. This is a white veranda. I've got three of them here together.
What are you upset about, Miller? What are you upset about? Oh, <laughs> I was like, what are you upset about? Miller, stop. Leave it. Leave it. Oh, this is the first time I've seen a, no, leave it. A turtle in my yard. It's okay. Thank you for letting me know. He's a friend. That's so nice. Okay, we're going to leave it. Um, my son and Welt is looking amazing. So in this bed I've shared with you before, we do, um, ooh, bliss down here. Here's more of the dappled willows. Look how pretty bliss is back here. She's, <laughs> she's planted next to a, um, Oh, my mind's blanky right now, but she just seems to be floating in the, uh, the plant. So this is our star garden. In this garden, we've planted uh, scentables and we planted in quantities of eight. So there'd be a nice pop of color, but I've been, you know, cutting them back as I shared with you because of the, um, Japanese beetles, but they still keep on pushing. They want to bloom. This is summer romance. And then this is Bolero. And over on this side, we've got more Bolero, Top Cream, Bliss Parfuma, and Son and Welt. And then we've got Bliss behind the bench. Beautiful limelight tree. And then down here, we've got Son and Welt, um, Earth Angel, Top Cream, and Sweet Mademoiselle. I can see a Sweet Mademoiselle over here. Let's look at it. Earth Angel Bloom. So what's really amazing that I want to share with you about this garden here is that these bare roots arrived to me just this spring and they were grade one and a half, which means uh, two canes the size of a pencil versus most of the time we, we buy grade ones, three canes the size of a pencil. So I was kind of worried that they would uh, not give you a good showing this year, but I've been so impressed. If you look at this here, I've already cut them back several times, but they're at least uh, approaching two and a half, three foot tall right now, even being cut back and they look fantastic. Um, so I'm very happy with Star Roses. This is Top Cream. Um, so in the event that you are presented with the opportunity to buy grade one and a half, um, and they are from Star Roses and Plants, have no fear. They're going to be awesome roses for you. I've got my Peggy Martins in here and some training that I need to do on these um, old garden roses. I've been debutting all of the potted roses so they are taking a little bit of a break right now. Let's turn and look at the view from the water. 
All right, one last, oh, and so <laughs> instead of having a, um, a statue, this is my feature piece until I figure out what I want to put here. But I just like having, you know, Nepeta, something that the bees are really enjoying. Let's look at it from up here. So you can do something like that. Just have um, some, a, you know, a, a sunken bed um, in the center of your garden as a feature. Let's look at one more. And here's the urns looking pretty. I do have drip running to those. I'm making a new bed here. I've burned the grass. I'm waiting for it to totally die back. I just want to extend the bed to make it easier for my husband to mow. The drift roses looking pretty. This is peach drift. This is Zade. Got daylilies, Cinco de Mayo. I'm gonna move that yellow rose there. That's the poet's wife. And it, I have a yellow garden, so it's going to move. I've cut back the um, Napata. After the first flush, you know, it gets cut, it could grow up to six feet wide if you let it. And so I go ahead and trim them back after that first flush to give them um, you know, a little bit more shape and I can get into the beds and clean up. This is Anne Marie. Volcano getting ready to show us some blooms, but I'm not going to get it. Let it. <laughs> Kaleidoscope. Bosco Bell in there. Ken's eagle with flocks around it, and we've planted his stainless steel. I need to find a new home for my osprey. I just don't want to have concrete so close to each other. So I need to find a place to tuck that in. I'm thinking over on the other side, I've got a viburnum and I just like to kind of tuck it in there. So that is it for our tour for the second week in July, what's in bloom. So a lot of phlox, allium, uh, the nepeta of course is still blooming, it keeps going. So thanks so much for joining me Rosebuds, I'll see you in the next video.